What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So with the recent release of the 2023 Polaris, especially on the mountainside for this guy, but lots of cool new things to talk about. So we thought we would share some insights, some personal experience and, and just take a deep dive into all things new for Polaris. Let's get into it. Okay, so lots of stuff that's new. You guys have already seen, I hope that you guys liked the reveal video that Levi LaValle and I did, along with John Stockman and Marty Sampson. A lot of fun to go and be a part of those things, guys. And uh, yeah, kind of the first time that I've been scripted in a long time. And there's some of that that you could tell and some of it that you couldn't, but overall it was a really cool experience. And what a great way for me to get uh, a lot of insight, a lot of uh, real inside view of a lot of the different models that Polaris had come up with with 2023. A lot of different stuff on the short track side. The VR, VR1, uh, a hyper sled. I had heard from some of these guys that were out testing and in the filming part of that, that they kind of started to shut that thing down at 128 miles an hour. Holy smokes. I have never been that fast on a snowmobile and I think the closest I got was maybe about 105 and it is lightning fast. So really cool technology. Um, don't mind some of the two up stuff. And there's just a lot of really cool, exciting product um, across the board, but more to the point of what I'm really pumped about is talking about all things new for mountain. Um, I've got the website pulled up and you guys can follow along and I know that you're already going through and using the website as a tool to just find all that information. My DMs, the text, the things that have been going on um, all since you know the, the release of just what's the best option for me. Like I, I love tree riding, I want this, I want that. And your best option is to have, well, if you're talking about Boost or the 9R, I am throwing it back in everybody that you should have both. Because <laughs> there are so many reasons why having both would be really, really awesome. But if you had to be limited to that, uh, what would my ultimate pick be? Well, we'll get to that um, here towards the tail end of this. But let's just break down some of the options that Polaris did come up with, with you know, for, for the mountain sleds for 2023. So we've had the 850. What's really cool, and all you guys that are you know, madly trying to get in a snow check, and I get it, those, those, that time frame, and then the, the, I've already heard of sleds being sold out and things like that, know that the 850 Matrix Slash is now an in-season snowmobile that your dealers will have. So you're not out of the woods. Um, the idea that we have some new exciting news and some models that are out there, Remember that the 850 Matrix Slash, I mean, it's what we're currently riding and these things are unstoppable. They're just so much dang fun and highly buildable, uh, customizable, all of those things. Well, those things will be in season snowmobiles, not to mention everybody and their cousins selling snowmobiles right now so that they can get into the new stuff. So a lot of things about 850 that I feel like is very important to share. It's still such an amazing sled, amazing motor and an all new amazing platform. So we got to remember that the 850, and this is kind of where it started, especially now that we're talking about Matrix. Moving on, we've got the boosts. This last season, you guys remember at Snowcheck, those of you that were lucky and were able to get into a boost, you had those only two options. You could get a 165 boost, or you could get the 155 Chaos boost. So the 165 Pro, you know, a lot of people love that. I, I got that sled um, out of those two. If I were to pick a favorite, the 155 Chaos Boost, that's what I rode last season for quite a bit of time. And my style of riding, I'm a smaller guy. I really like a lot of front end lift. There hasn't really ever been a turbo sled that I've ridden, whether it was a factory or an aftermarket that didn't have a front end lift if you wanted it. But the 55 for my riding style was a lot of fun. And I know that there was a lot of guys out there that really enjoyed having those boosted sleds. Well, new for 23 now, and we all could have maybe forecasted this, that we would have some more track options from Polaris. And now that's fantastic news, right? You can get a Chaos or a Pro RMK in the 55, 65, 63 track lineups. You guys will notice you still can't get a 2.6 track unless you're 146 and then there's a, a 155 option there too uh, in the standard matrix but no the hero sleds were still keeping with that 275 or that three inch pitch track or three inch track so there's some of those things that stayed the same but like you guys probably wanted would be like a 165 chaos version of the boosted sled and i think that's fantastic that polaris easily answered that for 2023 
All right, and along with the track length options, you guys remember the 7S display, and on the boosted sled, it's a requirement. And you know, after spending a season with the 7S, and hopefully you guys are feeling the same, what, a, what an absolute like asset in terms of a, a piece of technology that I didn't necessarily know just how great it would be with being able to find your friends on the mountain. For me, you know, there's a lot of what I do that's sort of herding cats, you know, as a job and using the 7S to your advantage and being able to find everybody within your group, especially when maybe somebody's radio is not working or something like that. It was pretty cool to have that 7S and really explore all of the different functions that that gauge truly offers. And so, uh, I'm putting it out there right now. Like my message to any of you guys that are snow checking or thinking about it, um, the weight is worth it. Like the weight of the, of the 7S as we, you know, try our best to, to pull as much weight out of these snowmobiles as we can. I'm not going to sacrifice all of the, the function of the advantage. And again, just that, that term asset that I feel like the 7S gauge brings. So no matter what sled I get, I am really trying to get that 7S gauge in there. There's just too many reasons why it's, it's awesome. The other part of it for 23, obviously the tethers guys. I didn't have any issues with tethers this year. Hopefully you guys didn't either. So nice that Polaris has finally put that onto a snowmobile. And I think moving forward, that's just gonna be a standard feature that we're never ever gonna go without. And for my last video of don't be that guy, if your sled doesn't have a tether, put one on it and continue to wear it. Uh, the colorways for this year, you guys get it and you're gonna see my order kind of frustrates Polaris that I'm basically black on black with everything I do. I do a fair amount of wraps with Arctic FX graphics and love customizing our snowmobiles that way. And black on black is always the best way that if I don't know or have all of the details to what my builds are gonna look like, the blank canvas of black on black typically works. But never before have I been impressed by the factory colorways that Polaris has released. And this year, there are some really, really cool ones. And we'll put some of that, as you guys listen to me talk, you'll see some of those that are in there that are kind of my factory colorways that are pretty awesome. So I, I do like that for 2023. Moving forward, we, we, we really wanted this video to be about a lot of other models that are there, but you guys that know me, that have been following the channel, know about the mods that we build and the things that, you know, that I really like. Um, and, and also just the, the performance of a snowmobile, the, the Polaris 9R for 2023, my experience on the sled. So my, my first and only experience on the sled was in January. It was an awesome, awesome snow. And I was so excited. It was like being a little kid at Christmas. I was so pumped for this thing. And this thing without a doubt did not let me down. Everything that I had already kind of assumed from, from riding big bore motors in the past, from having you know, added components to a snowmobile, whether it was lightweight parts, whether it was additional like a head and some pipes and just things like that, all of those things that have become sort of these like necessary components to a snowmobile that really get me fired up, um, that thing delivered it. The 9R just, the moment I stepped on it, I grabbed the throttle, you know, I've been doing this with Polaris for a long time, guys, and I can easily tell you that, you know, 14 years of going to photo shoot and, and doing this stuff with these guys, this was the first time that I had been to a photo shoot where the sled was, you know, 8,400 RPM and just tacked perfectly everything about it and even the day. So the day, the people, the cameraman, all of that stuff was just working out really, really well. And I, I finally was able to just truly get on a snowmobile and plug right in. And it just, it, it knew what I wanted to do. It exceeded my expectations. And with as much as this maybe starts sounding like I'm wearing a collared shirt, you guys have to know that the, the, a true like factory mod and guys are already kind of getting annoyed with, with like the terminology. It, it's what you feel like when you're riding it. And what's funny is it's quiet right? Because, well, that's what players has to do, right? They've, they've got to build it like that. And as I get older, I don't hate quiet. You guys see my, my twin pipe builds and, and, you know, all these things and bikeman stuff. And it's like, after a long day and you're coming home on the trail, you're kind of like, man, I really, I really wish I had quiet mode. And the 9R was that way where it was quiet and yet had so much low end torque, had so much power. You could feel the lightweight crank. I mean, having that lightweight crank train, like, I don't know as people 
truly understand what that's like. And it's a bummer that we can't demo it to everybody that's interested because, you know, as Keith Curtis said it the best is noticing the lightweight crank like and what he does on the race course and this is Keith and Andy and I mean so many of these Polaris racers that have been using this this block using this motor and this setup guys for quite a while you feel that under your feet like you really truly do so horsepower aside and you guys are a lot of people panicking about horsepower and we we get it like seven percent more power twelve percent more torque they don't have those numbers I don't have them all I can tell you guys is what the sled feels like when you ride it. It feels light. It feels like every little move you make with your handlebars, it's, it's very responsive. And you get on something heavier and you realize that it's such an upper body or even full body sport to do this. This is, a, this is a snowmobile that is so lightweight, so nimble, and so ready to move when you want it that it's so drivable just with the throttle and brake. So you can make the craziest changes in direction, the craziest maneuvers by just blipping throttle. And then you guys have heard me a thousand times over talking about using the brake. But man, throughout your day, do you really notice that you have energy, you have, you, you feel awesome. Like you feel, you feel younger. You feel like, man, I can't even believe that I'm in the terrain that I'm in and I'm not working even close to as hard as I would maybe on my current sled or on an older sled or whatever that looked like. So the 9R to me, guys, it checks every single box as a sled that you would literally pull from the crate, put some freaking oil and fresh fuel in and boom, you are ready to jam. I, I've never before had that with a Polaris snowmobile. And so this is the one and you guys, Polaris, I thank you so much that in 2023, you truly did. And Marty Sampson said it best. I mean, this is the celebration of two stroke and you guys nailed it. So lots of questions, guys, as I'm kind of flowing through, whether it's a text, a direct message, something like that. A lot of people, you guys have seen the videos. You saw, you, you saw me talking about it. You've seen Keith, you've seen Chris. You know, Chris did an awesome job of some of those intro stuff, talking about 9R, and a lot of people reaching out going, Dan, in your honest opinion, you know, 9R versus the boost. And before I can start putting one in front of the other, Truthfully, it's about asking yourself, you know, what's your ultimate day like look like? Like what is, what is so dang important to you? Is it, you know, is it, is it, is it the, 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 the sled getting up on top of the snow? Is it, you know, you want to beat your buddies to the top of the hill? Is it, you know, having the ultimate power, even though maybe in a, some situations, depending on rider and even snow condition, you don't really need it. Maybe you're just one of those that you just have to have a boatload of power at your thumb and you know in which case like is the boost maybe the better sled for you the other part of that too that there's a lot of guys that will have to consider this there were guys in the shop just the other day where one of these guys was i mean he's 250 260 200, like big big rider right i mean huge guy and wanting to know like what's the sled for him I'll just tell you, like, there are plenty of these guys that are that size that not only do we have to make some pretty crazy adjustments to suspension, but a boosted sled at elevation, I mean, that's going to allow that guy to mountain ride the way he wants to. I mean, there is no real other power that's out there that will beat a boost besides a boost that's turned up or a bigger turbo or, you know, some type of tuning that's in there. You know, the, the, the mods that are out there What's unique about mod motors is it's very linear. Like that power is just from the freaking moment that I grab throttle, it's right there. You know, you talk to any race car driver and he's going around a corner. Well, if you're going around a corner and you're kind of waiting for boost to spool up, there's that uncertainty, you know, that there's that inconsistency that's there that you don't necessarily, you know, it's gonna be a boatload of power. And then as it builds, you kind of got to control that as it goes. A mod motor, they're just, one and done. It's just like, it's power. It's just boom. It just smacks 8350 or 8400 RPM and it's just constantly there. So you can get very confident and very consistent with power like that. As a bigger rider, man, the bigger the power, I mean, maybe that's your, that's your reasoning. Maybe that's the, you know, that's the end all. If I've got to have huge power, I'm a big, big guy um, and something like that. In which case too, what I, I would also be stressing the 165 versus the 55. All too often do I see guys working way harder than they need to because they feel like they've lost out on maneuverability between a 55 and a 65. 
we need to remember that with Matrix Slash, we have changed the game completely. And we did this a year ago, right? We've actually been doing this since, well, Chris started cutting tunnels way back in 16. And we have been building these sleds that are short tunnels with long tracks. I mean, a way to really think about that is a 165 Matrix Slash, it rides a lot like what a 155 Axis used to ride. And so guys that are bigger dudes that are thinking, well, I want the most maneuverable sled ever, and they bought a 155 Chaos Boost, they're probably like, holy smokes, why am I having to work so dang hard to make that sled work for me? And some of that is you're a big dude, you're sacking out that rear suspension, and the sled is just in constant wheelie mode. And there'd be some suspension changes for sure that you could change and make that thing settle down. But if I'm thinking about it and I'm wanting to order a sled and I am that size, a 165 might foot the bill and make riding just as enjoyable, but also make it a bit better and a bit more toned down so that when you do need to go from A to B, well, it's not an eight second ride and you're all over the place when all I wanted to do was just go straight up something. Okay, so, so, so back to this, you know, one versus the other. Um, and, and hopefully, I know I, I kind of went down a road of just talking about bigger guys and, and, and some of that stuff and where I think maybe the advantages are, but you do really have to ask yourself, and I do this all the time, of what it is that I'm hoping to get out of the day, you know, and maybe it's snow specific or maybe it's terrain specific, something like that. And for, for guys like how many guys on the East Coast that hit me up were like the 9R is was the answer like that's the most perfect thing for them because of their snow their riding style their environment all of those things and then you'd get the out west guy or maybe the canadian guy that has huge shoots deep deep snow something like that where it's boost all the way and so you're kind of all over the map but is there one that truthfully like outshines the other we're in a situation guys we live in a world where nearly no matter what oem you 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 go to you know you choose to go with you can't buy a bad sled. You can just buy a sled that's better suited for the style or the type of riding that you're truthfully into. And so how many guys are sitting there at this crossroads of like, do I want sort of this factory mod 9R thing that I'm not familiar with, or do I go with a factory turbo? I'm sure guys are going back and forth of what do I do? And the answer is truthfully is you, you can't go wrong with either one of them. I mean, there, there is so many pluses and minuses to each one of them. Where I stand is no matter what we do with a boosted sled, whether it was aftermarket or now right from the factory, warrantied, all of this jazz, the Polaris Boost is without a doubt one of the most amazing snowmobiles that you could ever own. It's kind of crazy to me that you can just go buy this thing that is like, well, what we all, there's a lot of you out there that we used to spend how much money and how much time building. Now you can just go snow check it and it shows up in the fall, we hope and you're ready to jam. I mean, that, that part is just truthfully amazing. It's like the, you know, the new Razor for Polaris. I've been in that thing and it, it's so terrifyingly fast, it makes no sense that you can just go buy that thing. And the, the Boost is, is very close to that. So guys that are familiar with boosted sleds and you know that's what you like, you're confident in that world. You want low end, like immediate 80 mile an hour track speed. You've kind of just said it to yourself that the Boost is the sled for you guys that are where I stand, where I, I really do feel, and I've been cursed for a big chunk of my snowmobiling career in terms of building and riding lightweight snowmobiles, I feel that big power to weight, like I feel the weight, I feel that difference of that X amount of pounds, right? We've, we've I think, narrowed it down to somewhere around the 25 to 27 pounds of what the Patriot Boost is over the top of, you know, an 850, and. And, and some of those, we won't get too far into these dry weights and exact numbers, um, but you feel the weight. You feel the weight of the sled. And so regardless of this big, like 200 plus horsepower snowmobile at nine pounds or whatever it was and all the percentages, I mean, it's fantastic news. But for me, I feel that weight out in front of it. Is it a game changer? Does it, is it a reason why I wouldn't have the sled? And the answer is never. I mean, you go into that knowing that it's a way more powerful snowmobile, but it has some weight associated with it. On the other end of that, you take the 9R and you take a snowmobile that is more powerful than an 850, right? So more powerful than the stock 850 that many of us have out there. And you guys also get it, like what we're gonna do. Like Polaris is limited to the can that they have, the clutching that they're gonna put out there. They're gonna do this stuff for the masses. There's gonna be a lot of lightweight options going on to the 9R. We all get that. 
And so take that as like, that's your base sled now. I mean, can you even believe it that we're at a, you know, a 900 cc two stroke that is just like, like they've all said, I mean, it's 50 years of putting so much dang time into something of, you know, this is, this is the celebration. This is the two stroke. This is, I mean, we keep saying that this will be the top of it. It's probably not, they're probably bored of this at this point, but it's just crazy to me to know that we, we have something that is so powerful that we will build from from there. I mean, that's just, it, to, to me, it just, I don't know when it's gonna end. I mean, we're already making snowmobiling so incredible. You guys will all agree with me that the, the, the accessibility, like where we're going with these sleds, I mean, it's nuts, right? And so the 9R to me, we're a lightweight crank train, we're a lightweight motor, and we build more power than an 850. I mean, we're, we're just sitting there checking boxes of just how amazing of a snowmobile that would be. So for me, for my riding style and what I ultimately enjoy as I get older as a snowmobiler, the, the, the factory mod motor will, will inevitably be the sled that as I'm looking at what sleds that I would snow check, looking at sleds I would take out for that day, that snowmobile is, is typically gonna be the one. And then I say that, and then there'll be that over the mountain bar deep day where the boost is sitting there staring at you going, you know that I'm gonna be the best club for this freaking round and you know that so you should take me and so you know is that answer both and how many of you guys would be like yeah it must be nice you can have both in a perfect world i mean that's where we would be and polaris has done an awesome job of just saying you can have the boost you can have the 9r you know you had the boost this year so those of you that are like so quick you're seeing it on marketplace that i can just i can make money on snowmobiling how many people i have tried my best to instruct to just say hey if you have a boost now hang on to that bad boy, and then you know what your next sled needs to be. And vice versa, if you've already built some sort of mod, naturally aspirated sled this year, maybe the boost is right for you next year. Having those two things in the trailer, up on the sled deck, at the house, in the garage, whatever it looks like, man, if you just, I mean, you've capitalized on everything. All forms of what you want out of a mountain snowmobile, you've got both. And hopefully that's uh, some good insight for a lot of people. Maybe it's the obvious one, but for me, man, I'm having a really, really hard time deciding on what is the ultimate, especially if you're gonna put one versus the other, when it really is about power to weight. Okay, so as we wrap this up, hopefully the video was helpful, guys. Again, I, I wanted to go through and just talk about, obviously, my first time experiences on the 9R. I've been on the boosts um, a fair amount, and, and it will be awesome knowing that we've got a Chaos Boost and a 165. Those are gonna be things that I'm sure that were a few of you guys out there that kind of built boosts into that for this season, so you kind of have, have that experience already. So we'll get out onto the snow, we'll do way more reviews once we're out there and, and really explore these snowmobiles. I just wanted to put a video out there that kind of gave you guys a bit of insight to where, where I'm at and in terms of personal experience, what I am already working on in Snowcheck. Um, getting to the Players website and going through every bit of it, how many people were asking about horsepower numbers, actual weight, displacement, bore, this, that, and the other. I mean, there's a ton of that information that's out there for you guys. You don't need me to, to, to kind of go through that with you. So, and again, you guys leave questions and comments. I'd love to hear what your guys' maybe uh, idea of the perfect sled is. You know, Polaris is always listening. They, they, they are definitely listening to guys like me that are on the snow as much as we can, guys like Barant. I mean, guys all over the place that are really putting in as much input as we can of what is truthfully important to us as mountain riders. Uh, again, guys, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.